to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, I was thinking about this uh, the other day when the iPad first came out. I used to use that down at the beach in Waikiki. I still do at night. And people would text me like, what are you up to today? You know, meet us at Duke's for a drink or something. I go, I'm hanging out with some friends. Well, who are you hanging out with? I'm hanging out with Thomas Aquinas trying to read the Summa or St. Augustine, who is so absorbing, you know, or the, the early saints, Justin Martyr, St. Athanasius. And when I would read their words, I would say, hey, Justin, help me out with this. What, 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 what was going on when you wrote this? Or help me understand your words. Uh, because as Catholics, we, we know we have that, that intimacy of the communion of saints. And we can ask them for help and give us uh, insight and guidance as we read their words. And, uh, you know, lately for the last year, I've been studying the life of St. Paul. In fact, we're, leaving, we're leading a pilgrimage to the, in the footsteps of St. Paul uh, in, in May. And I can hardly wait. And so over a year, every night and every day, spending a couple hours every day, early in the morning before sunrise on my lanai overlooking the ocean, and the sun here in Florida kind of comes up, you know, uh, in front of my eyes as I'm reading and praying. And then in Hawaii at night, the sun sets while I'm reading. And just getting so close to Paul and feeling that experience of, wow, what a gnarly dude he was and just how tough he was and how gritty he had to be. And yet his, his love uh, that he had, and so I'm fascinated by his life. And so today, I thought, why don't we get uh, the producer of the, the film, Paul the Apostle, to visit with us. So we're for fortunate to have T.J. Burden with us. Aloha, T.J. Aloha, Bear. Good welcome, to be here. welcome to the director's, what is it called? The director's studio? Exactly. It, uh, that, right in the that? heart. Yeah, what, what is that TV show? So if you were, T.J., it's so good to have you on our show. If you were an animal, what kind of animal would you want to be? Oh, a pelican. <laughs> oh, really? It's kind of my spirit animal. I was just in Florida, actually, a couple days ago, and I saw a pelican. I was like, that's my spirit animal. I, I think that would be me. Well, okay, so, you know, I often say that I'm like a pelican, too, because I'm so ugly oh. on the land. But I look graceful in the, you know, over the ocean, you know, when I surf. Yeah, exactly. So what do you dig about the pelican? I just love, like, the – it just dives, you know? When it's hungry, it goes for it, and it knows what it needs, and then it's just chilling, you know? It's a, it chills, but it goes for what it wants, you know, what it needs. Ultimately. That's so cool. That's so cool. So I'm going to change my whole format of my show from now on and ask people that question first. <laughs> Spirit animals, man. It's, I think that was one of his questions, wasn't he? He used to ask that, like – Yeah. So, but, but TJ, I was so fortunate you came up and made a point. Uh, my friend Jason – our friend Jason Jones said, go, go kick – bear in the shin or something and we got to meet and what a thrill and it took us all this time to get you on the show but uh uh we, you know your your uh, background in films i'd like to start off go back even a little bit further i want people to get to know who you are what uh, brought you to this point of making catholic films and your walk with the lord um were you always a saint did you have a halo around your head when you were born or anything like that like i did <laughs> Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was, I'm always uh, chasing guys like you. So, no, I mean, born and raised Catholic, um, went to a Catholic high school, Catholic grade school, wanted, wanted nothing to do with it. Honestly, I, I ended kind of my senior year being like, peace out, I'm done. This is, uh, I'm going to go head out on my own. And, you know, then as it happens, you meet somebody, you meet a, uh, a, a lovely Catholic family. I, you know, started dating a girl who, where I began to see that, like, it was reasonable and beautiful to live and not just the, not just that, but it's like, it's like the hundredfold. Right. So it's like, that's what we're promised. It isn't like a, you're going to have like a mediocre life and you're going to really have to sacrifice a lot. Like that's not what comes first. The first, the banquet comes first and, and then life, you know, shows itself that it's, uh, you know, it's not all PG adversity. And, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But that was the beginning of, uh, for me, uh, a, a path of, um, of seeing, of seeing the beauty, you know, and, and the lived out thing. And so for me, film and, um, and my faith, so to speak, have kind of gone together or art, if you will. Um, I was an actor. Um, I went to Loyola, Chicago. I got involved, uh, in documentary films and that's what ultimately led me out to, to Los Angeles. Los Angeles was the farthest from my mind. I'm from Michigan. So like where in Michigan, 
uh, Trevor City, Diocese of Gaylord. Um, Northern Michigan, beautiful place. I heard uh, it. I heard of it. I thought I thought it was a rumor. Hey, I got to ask you a favor. There's some rattling going on with your hand or your wires or something. So put your hands over your head through the rest of the interview. Sure. Maybe that'll do it. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. So happening. I've heard. I've heard of. I've heard of the. I've heard of Michigan. We're going to actually be going there. Uh, long ride home. You know our motorcycle show. We're sure. going to go there. Uh, season four. We're going to film there in Lansing. There's going to be a thousand Catholic bikers. Knights on bikes from Knights of Columbus are going to hook up there. So. Uh, That's great. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. So how in the world, you're in Michigan, and then you went to acting school where? Went to Loyola, Chicago. Um, okay. So it was between Franciscan University and, and Loyola, and I went and visited both. And this is at this point in the journey, like I had come back to, to my faith in a, in a, in a strong way. Um, and I, I, I knew I, I wanted to be, I needed more uh, formation, if you will. I wanted, I wanted, I needed more um help in that regard. So Loyola Chicago was a perfect, uh, a perfect fit for me. Um, uh, it, it was all due respect to, to, to Franciscan. I think I had, I was desiring to be more in the fray, more in the mess. Mm-hmm. Uh, so being in a big city like Chicago was a really attractive proposition. Yeah, nothing different, more different than Steubenville in Chicago, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was, it was attractive to me and it was really a really help, a real help to me. Um, I ended up minoring in theology and was able to continue to act and do communications and, and, and start to feel that like, wow, with film, you're able to go and do more like that desire for, to see more, to go and do more, like go beyond just the stage was a really attractive prospect for me. And Chicago gave me this incredible playground of there's just some of the most phenomenal stuff. In fact, we're doing a documentary series right now, flash forward to the company. Uh, I, I work for ODB films is, is in Chicago and, um, full circle kind of thing. And we're doing a, a series of documentaries based from a lot of them based in Chicago about fascinating, um, stories of encounters called the encounter series. So it's about oh, cool. people, people's lives who were changed, uh, and then who end up doing this, this phenomenal work for the poor, for prison outreach, for, uh, at risk mothers, but it's all about the person's encounter. Anyway, it's just a yeah, physical it, thing because it, it was fascinating reality in Chicago. The what's happening there on the ground is um, it's a difficult city, but it's also there's some gorgeous ministry happening. You know, it's don't make me go feed the poor. You know, but but what happens is when you have an encounter with Christ, it, it, something changes in you, and you, you you're not feeling like oh I have to. You're compelled to. You're drawn. To it. The Lord gave you, you these desires to serve. But, you know, the reason why I couldn't become an actor is because you had to be good at it. You know, uh, the reason I couldn't, I, you know, I took a radio class in uh, college at Baylor. Uh, but I said, oh, I better become an accountant because you have to be good at radio to do radio, you know, accountant, you know. But so you went off, you struck off and followed the, this desire in your heart from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, I, I just exactly. There was always that desire. It was vague and I don't know exactly where it was leading, but it was it was it was constantly pulling me out. And then um, I also had a friend once tell me that because later in life, you know, being in L.A., I try to get back in the acting game. You know, it's part of the thing when you're in Los Angeles, you kind of have to keep all the irons in the fire. But I had a friend tell me once um, only do acting if if you can't do anything else. Um, mm. And he meant, meant it in, and I think that's the kind of the call of the artist is if literally this is the thing for you, you'll know it because you can't do anything else. Yeah, and, I, when they told me not to become a priest, they told me the same thing. <laughs> no, no, but no, and I actually, I was, I was talking with a priest once about that. And he said, yeah, only be a priest if it's the only thing you can, you know, if it's like, what was the exact word you used? That's a perfect statement. If you can't do anything else, yeah. So you're just drawn to that, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a vocation in in a real in a real sense. I think for artists, it, it really is, and I think we do a disservice in this kind of m- moment now of like YouTube stars and everybody's a rock star. And um, I mean, there are a few people like you who actually have legitimate shows and you know are putting things out there. But there's so much of that kind of fake celebrity thing going on, as opposed to what's the call of the artist? Um, the call. And so, the call. Absolutely. And, and John Paul II, for me, was a big friend when I first came back into the church. Um, like, I didn't know the guy at all. Um, but he was a playwright. And, you know, he exactly he so got you. All, all this stuff started to make sense for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Von Balthazar and kind of this this dramatic. He always he is a theodrama. He talks about um, it, it was just an, it was to realize that like and then, yeah, that letter to the artist that um, that John Paul wrote. Like, well, blew we're coming to the end of a segment here, but we really do have to have you be careful with your hands or something. Scratchy noises are happening. Everybody mm-hmm. out there in Radio Land, those scratchy noises are TJ's fault. 
he is an expert in media production. So, hey, uh, but though the, the thing about it is Jesus was a storyteller. And, you know, when Augustine wanted to be, was considering becoming a Christian, he was used to writing, reading Plato and all these philosophical books. And then he reads the Bible and goes, what's this? This is just a bunch of stories. But, the, but life is a story. Life is a pedagogy. And, and the most profound things have to be told in story form. It's not some sort of, uh, you know, analytical formula. You almost just have to say it uh, in, in some sort of allegorical format to really get the poetry communicates deeper things than Aquinas does in some ways, you know. But uh, right. we're talking with T.J. Burden. He is the, one of the producers with the film company. You have to give me the website. It's odbfilms.com. And you know the, the people behind Paul, Apostle of Christ, this great film that I, I just really love. And we'll be right back, uh, talk more with T.J. Burden. Inside the Actors Studio, uh, we're changing our format from the Bear Wozniak Adventure for one hour. Uh, we'll be right back. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure uh, and the further adventures of really bad TV. That's what we like to focus on in our, in our uh, radio show here. It's criticized bad TV. You know what? i got to tell you, we have a guest with us today, T.J. Burton. He's the producer of Paul the Apostle. He's with odbfilms.com, a, a Catholic man who has a fire for the Lord. So much bad stuff. Is, I mean, you don't want to say this, but there's so much bad stuff out there. It's, it makes you cringe. The, the Catholic Church who brought us Michelangelo and then you see bad acting, bad scripts, bad uh, cinematic work, uh, bad um, uh, wardrobe, bad uh, sets, and you just want to cringe. And uh, I'm not a, I'm, I mean, I have a TV show, but I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. But, but this film, Paul the, Apo Paul the Apostle of Christ, uh, from the moment you get into it, you're like, I'm there. This is, I I'm a student of Roman history. I mean, I can look at, What's going on here? Uh, the clothing, the, the, the shackles that he wears, uh, everything about this is like it just brings you right into the moment. And so we've talked a little bit about the background, TJ, but so often I get sidetracked and go down some rabbit hole, and I want to get right into the heart of this film with you. What inspired this? Um, how did the screenplay come about? How did this all come together? And what was, what was the visceral feeling you had as you began to start this process? What did you want to accomplish? Well, I, I loved your uh, your analysis of the, and th thank you for noticing down to the costumes, down to the to the shackles, because that's the kind of detail that like we came at with this. Because we most of the time these Bible movies when they come on, it looks like these guys came out like they were uh, out of the dry cleaners. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, bright yeah. purples, and it was that was probably not the case for for many of the, these right. folks. So we really took care of that. Um, th this came about because we we did a um, a movie before this called Full of Grace. Um, and it's a, it's a, it was a small experiment of a project, $250,000 we spent. And we said, let's just do a prayerful, a, an accurate portrait of our lady at the end of her life. What would that have been like? So uh -huh. what, 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 what emerged and we didn't even expect it to be a feature film. We thought it would be three 20 minute shorts, but we cast this incredible, uh, woman, uh, Bahia gold who first role she felt called to it. She's not Catholic. Um, but she, by the end of it, I think she, she got a little bit closer to the, to the, to the, to the source, you know, you can't play Mary. And if you're a method actor, <laughs> watch out, you know? Yeah. Um, so that, that started a path for us bear. It was like, wow, there's something here, you know, we're doing something in a little bit different. Um, so Paul was sort of a natural follow up. No one had ever put Paul on screen before. Like why? Uh, and in fact, he'll love, he'll love this. As we were, uh, as we started the development of the project, um, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck uh, announced that they were developing a Paul Paul story with uh, uh, with Hugh Jackman, uh, and we were like, "Oh boy, say goodbye." There there goes our work. They're going to destroy us. Well, come to find out, two and a half years into a development process, that's about how long it takes to to crack these stories. Um, we we uh, we realized. Yeah, good luck. I mean, it was hard enough for us. So it was that kind of combination of like what – and we want, we didn't want just to tell like a generic Paul story. We wanted to get into his psychology. We wanted to understand what motivated him, what because bothered this, him. This man is a gritty, 
I mean, you, you, you walk it. alongside that man. He's a great, I mean, oh my, the things that he faced, the twists and turns in his life. We often said, can you imagine if the head of ISIS, I know this is bold to say, but if the head of ISIS today became a cardinal or a pope, that they converted to the true faith, um, that's the dramatic conversion that Paul went through. He was a Pharisee. He had an incredible encounter with God, and then he became, he becomes, it's probably more accurate to, to think of him as a cardinal of today's kind of, you know, it was him and Peter running the show. Right. And he um, wrote so much of the theology. You know, it's so the theology. You know, and when, and when just, he, yeah. I mean, when he showed up, he showed up in Cyprus, there were Christians there because he had persecuted them in Jerusalem and they fled to Cyprus. That's I mean, right. He had an impact. Part of, part of his early ministry, I mean, his early, you know, dark days, it scattered uh, the Christian church like hot, glowing embers across that southern part of Rome and even over into North Africa. And then he has this conversion experience. But this guy's walking thousands of miles. He's been whipped, stoned, shipwrecked three times. We don't even know when some of these things happened or where they happened. That's right. But what, what, here's the problem, because I'm sitting here reading and studying the life of Paul. I've read dozens of books, well, not dozens, but in, uh, close to 20 books on his life. You cannot possibly tell the story of the life of Paul. It's just too big of a, too big, too big of a it. project. So what you did, well, how did you come up with the So, the, the yeah, no, exactly. That? We, we, we cried and prayed and had a couple whiskeys along the way and tried to understand what, um, what, what is the story. What we kind of nailed, if you, you kind of had to boil this stuff down, especially if 90 minutes on screen. What are you saying? What are you telling? And this is, this is the portrait of a man at the end of his life who regrets nothing. It has all hope and certainty that he, where he's going. But humanly speaking, he's concerned about what the legacy is. How is the church going to go on? I mean, think of a father with his sons. He's just concerned. He just, he'll always, it's just part of his nature. And so um, we, we used what we understood from scripture um, enough to kind of get us into a world. And we thought it would be very interesting knowing that St. Luke uh, was who would end up writing much of the Acts of the Apostles, which document a lot of Paul's life. Why don't we bring him in? That was so, to, so perfect. Yeah, and it was just, and then it was two brothers. I mean, these guys traveled the whole world together. You didn't, and I didn't even know that. You know, as a, and I'm not sure if a lot of your readers are that uh, familiar with Paul. Um, I, I had to be honest before making this movie. I, I, I knew he was the kind of second, the second reading guy who was kind of angry and kind of uh, yelled a lot. <laughs> uh, but to, I didn't know, I didn't know him as a man. I didn't, I didn't know who he was, and. <laughs> This development process blew my mind because I just he some of the things he the awareness that he had at, at the end of his life to say something like it is not I but Christ who lives in me, Amen. like that is it's something I'm still working out. I have no idea what that even means, but it's like he so identifies with 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 Christ that um, he 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 can make a statement like that. Tough, um, and, gr tough and gritty guy. I mean, uh, you know, reaching the, the, these churches, the church in Philippi and. The church in Galatians and Thessalonians, and and and, and he's he's there for four to five, six maybe weeks, maybe two months, and then he's persecuted and has to leave, and this yeah. fledgling church is left behind. Timothy, go see how they're doing. That's you know? right. And then he hears that the Judaizers have come, and they're saying, "Oh, you have to be circumcised." And you see Paul saying, "Thou thou foolish Galatians," you know, which was kind of a saying back then, saying you know, saying how easily you've fallen back into bondage, and and saying, "I wish those men that come to say you need to cut yourself and be circumcised." cut themselves, you know? That's right. He was a tough guy. Yeah, he flipped it on his head. I mean, he, this guy traveled close to like what we think is about, ten, you know, ten, I think 10,000 miles by foot. Yeah, at um, least. And by, and at, by sea. Maybe and by amount. sea. Yeah, it, yeah and it, may, it may be a, a greater amount than 10. It may be closer to 30 now that I have to refresh I, I my think I'm, it's, I think it's around, I hear that, 10 to 15,000. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And it's, uh, so yeah, you would have to imagine this man. But he also murdered. So let's also psychologically, let's re remember that he, he killed in the name of his God. Those are wounds. You know, I think we know a lot now about human psychology more than we did before. Mm -hmm. PTSD, these wounds that people bring back from war. He, he was the same way. Just because God heals you and forgives you doesn't mean there isn't, you know, when you, you cut yourself, that the cut right. will heal, but it's a little tender. It always will. It doesn't re retain the same 
strength in the skin. So he's remembering that. He recalls that. He is possibly haunted by that. Not because he's a, he's been forgiven, but I think it gives that. I think it gives him I don't feel that haunting so much in, in his writings, but but a determination because of it. And the fact that Stephen, when he was dying, said the words, Lord, don't hold this against him. And the other earlier martyrs probably did those same things when he was uh, in the throes of, of, of killing them or persecuting them because uh, Stephen was there praying for him. And, and, and let me ask you this question. Stephen kept praying for this man. You know, he kept praying for him. And he was eventually converted. And so when Paul preached, he quite often used the same outline of the talk Stephen gave mm. in his preaching. At the end of the show, when Paul uh, dies, he's greeted by someone. And I'm not sure, is that Stephen? Is that Mary? Who is that that is greeting him at the end of the show? Who is that? Well, I don't want to spoil it for your audience, but no, it, it, it's... Yeah, it, I do. Uh, I want to. Yeah. Nobody yeah, listen. Close, close, your eye, close your ears for... 10 seconds. Who is that? No, and in fact, it's an impressionistic feeling, so it may help some audiences to understand that, yes, th the idea there was that that, that is Stephen. Yes. In paradise. What a it's all, And it's all the people he killed. The little girl. The little yes, girl. that's the right. Girl. So, yeah. one who embraces him. So, that was a big idea that came out in the development <sighs> process. Was, and it happened just like that, I swear. Oh, you know what? i got to take a break, TJ. We'll be right back. This is the Bear Wozniak Convention. We're talking with TJ Burden. Um, the producer of Paul, the Apostle of Christ, uh, with odbfilms.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm so thankful. You, you don't really know. Uh, in, in my life, I focus so much on just the quality of the content, working to make things happen, that I forget that we need funding to do this. And, oh, we're so thankful for uh, the uh, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, who uh, helps fund this show every every week, helping us bring it to you. I got to know Tom Gripe, the CEO at Notre Dame Federal Credit Union in Napa Institute last summer. And uh, I was shooting season three of Long Ride Home in Hawaii. And I'm like, wow, I need to get... Uh, my this car I just this used car I bought financed. How am I going to do that and and be and be doing the shoot and all that all at the same time? I contacted someone at Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. They didn't know I knew Tom, and uh, and while I'm do on the set, you know, and we're riding motorcycles and there's no phone connections. Within about four or five six days, she had me all set up and my my loan was funded and we just kept right on ro rolling. So I believe in Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. They can provide for you home loans, everything, every kind of investment, everything you could want, and we love them. I got to go visit them. Yeah, in in uh, when I went to the Notre Dame game this year too, and got to go to their facilities, and they're just great people, and they love Jesus. And then we're also so thankful for Solidarity uh, Health Share. This these people live what they preach. This is Catholic health uh, care. It's not health insurance, but it's similar to it. And uh, the members of my family use them. And when you uh, when you're involved with this company, you know that none of your money is going to fund things that are contrary to Catholic teaching. And I just love Brad Hahn. You can listen to my interview with him, too, on one of my most recent shows. But we're just so thankful for their funding our show and wish that you would patronize them. You can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you can see the links to their sites down below. And I also got to remind you, our TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, is showing on iTunes, Prime Video, and Google Play now. Um, the problem is EWTN showed the, showed the series about 15 times, all 10 episodes, and the Armed Forces Network did, too. But nobody got to see it in sequence. You know, they forget when it's on, and so they saw it hit and miss. So you can go to iTunes or Prime Video or Google Play, and you can push play, and you can watch the whole series. I think it costs you 15 bucks or something for the whole series. And some of that comes back to us so we can help fund future, future seasons. We're almost done with season two now, by the way. So get excited. Go to our website, deepadventure.com, if you want to find out more about that. And if you want to find out more about our trip to, uh, to, to the footsteps of St. Paul, we're going to Greece. Uh, this uh, this May, so please come and join us. Our guest today uh, is T.J. Burden. He's the producer of Paul the Apostle of Christ, and uh, just something that we can be proud of. This film is something that we can be proud of and want to share with our friends. And it's available now on um, what what digital net? Did I watch it on Netflix or what did I watch it on the other day? I 
Our whole family yeah, watched it. Same same with your with your show. You can find it on iTunes and basically we're all uh we're all videos are are all films are found. Netflix not yet. Um that's a later later process. So right now we're still in the kind of rental uh we're purchase. In that, we're in that phase too. Yeah. 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 I don't know what what'll happen with Netflix, but we're hopeful with that. But yeah, I mean, so the beauty of this is you can sit down with your friends and family and watch this. What what, what could be better than getting ready for the Lenten season than mm-hmm. to watch mm-hmm. this film? What kind of um Let's talk about the writer, your co-producer, the actors for a moment, because the actors were her- ter- just terrible actors. <laughs> they were, uh, yeah. In fact, we were able to. Um, it was a, it was a gift we had. Uh, Patricia Deserto was our casting director. She is uh, Woody Allen's casting director. So everybody was wanting to work with with Woody, Prestige. So it was important for us to kind of take a different approach when we when we went out with the movie that this isn't just another viable movie. Right. So this is something special. And what we're really proud of is that most people think of it, IMDB, the Internet Movie Database, the kind of right. the thing online, it classifies it as a historic drama. Oh, cool. There you go. It's to be about a f- character that is very important to Catholic Christian tradition. Big win. But also because of the fact that we, we cast, we, we, we did everything in, in the right way. We, we call these kind of – I kind of coined this term sacred art house. Um, as a kind of subgenre of the kind of films we're doing. So we're trying to make uh, the Sistine Chapels of our day. You know, we, we are um, trying Absolutely. to take, we're trying to take care of the art, what we're trying to evangelize through this. Our company, ODB Films, uh, is, is a Catholic ministry out of Chicago, started making short form video content for the young church for 10 or 15 years. Well, you this have a teen like, catechism, right? Something like that. Yep, video yeah. catechism, VCAT. Um, it was a 200 plus film series that helps break down the catechism in different, fun, interesting, outside the box ways, which is what ODB Films stands for. The box, the bears. Um, it's, the box, uh, is the box ways like a certain style, or is is that where you're going to with it? It's like the, yeah, the box well, has its, its yeah, feeling. There's, there's the box, and then we're always outside of it because we're we're doing things that are a little unconventional. But I'm gonna tell you when we started the show, TJ. I said, "Where did our great artist Michelangelo right. go?" And I and I it, it's it's it, I'm telling you this this film uh, rivals that type of artistry. It's so it's so it's the the screenplay is pro, is profound. Uh, the cinematic quality, of the actors. But I interrupted you. You're telling us who's involved no. in it. No, no, that you, you nailed it, and it was it was just it's it, that that God has given this 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 ministry the gift and the opportunity to do this. This is started with Eric Groth and Becky out of Chicago. They're youth ministers. They never wanted to start anything. They were not interested. I mean, they wouldn't. If you would have told them feature films, they would have been like, uh, "We're just trying to help the church right now." Mm-hmm. Slowly grow, grow, grow. Andrew Hyatt is the writer director, um, so he's the other piece of the of Wait, the puzzle. Who, who sat down and said, "This is what." We're going to take this three days or how many days of, of, of life of Paul does it cover? It's um, it's probably over the course of what we think is a week. Yeah, but he, he has his flashbacks and stuff. But flashbacks. But I mean, yeah, who, who, who parsed that down? Who, who came up with that first script? Andrew laid out the first script and I always joke, I tease him, Andrew, a writer. He, he, he gave us, he's an incredible researcher. So he did the same thing with you, read every book under the sun. And he came back with like a 200 plus page script. Um, and it was just like, it was the whole life and it was fascinating, but we said, we got to make this, by the way, we made this movie for 5 million bucks. So just so your audience knows that that is like six wow. times cheap uh, of any, uh, yeah. uh, of, of any, uh, biblical film. So he and I just wrestled with it for two years and we said, okay, let's, you start with a whole big, uh, banquet the then montage, you say, yeah. what is the thing we're focusing here on and then you start with that spe- specific moment and then you kind of pull from the past what scenes work what fat do you need to cut um all oriented towards the goal um uh, of you know and then it, it was a uh, it was a pleasure because you know to have jim caviezel um say yes to the to the to to the film was a was a huge gift because you know of course he comes uh I, I, he, we called it back in the habit when he put when, yeah, he, put right the, on. when he put the biblical robe oh, back dude, on. As Luke, I mean, I love Luke, first of all, but the way Jim portrayed him was as this loyal friend who was self-effacing. You know, yep. when, you, when you read the story of Paul, you don't really read the story of Luke, except for, except for he'll say things like we sometimes. 
He That's right. He doesn't insert himself as a biographer into the story, but he's right there breathing he's every right step, there. walking Nobody every step. Knows that. Yeah. It's, it's true. And yeah, Jim brought a humanity, I think, because of his experience doing doing Passion and playing Jesus, who, you know, you only can play Jesus. You'll have to do very in a very specific way. Luke, there's much more freedom. And I think he enjoyed that, bringing humanity. And I think that's the underpinning thing, Bear, is everybody in this project, everybody in this project wanted to bring a certain humanity, wanted to bring, make these characters and show that there's no break in tradition. There's no break from a thousand, 2,000 years ago to today. It still happens. Well, you know, but, you know, like, and it's the like, humanity you know, go ahead. Is the thing that connects us, you know? I mean, you read these names in the Bible. Say hi to Priscilla and Aquila for me. But you just kind of hop over. I'm like, who, who was that again? Which one was the guy? Which one was the girl? Oh, exactly. You know? And then you, but but these were significant people in his life, dear that, friends that 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 he worked side by side with in the in the tent making. Uh, he he was. Uh, I mean, uh, they helped support him. Yes. Um, they were with him when they were when they were thrown out of Rome because of the persecution, the upheaval because of these people that worship Crestus, Jesus. Absolutely. They were thrown out of Rome, and then they were able to return. And then Paul's there with them, and they're with him. And you bring these these characters to life in, in, in just this 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 beautiful and perfect way as leaders of that of that church. We're talking with T.J. Burton, who that one moment in time that I met you at the Napa Institute, I just said I got to get to know this guy. So uh, and 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 talk with you more about the show. But just getting to know you was so impressive. Then watching the film was amazing. We're going to be back with T.J. Burton after this uh, quick break. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak adventure. I am told by my producers that I have to tell you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. You know, we have a group called Bears Man Cave. It's uh, for men only. It's a secret group um, in the sense that it's a secret Facebook group. You can't join it by going to Facebook. you got to go to our website and sign up for it and donate $10 a month to be a part of it. But then, you, then we give you access to this secret Facebook group. And the men challenge each other, equip each other, help mobilize each other. Uh, share with each other, uh, pray with each other. Uh, and every two or three weeks, we have a Zoom video chat meetup where we all meet up and we, we're going through one of my books uh, on the virtues and we, we talk story with one another and we model uh, for other men how they can start their own man cave with men maybe on the deck of their, in the back deck with a cigar or whiskey or breakfast in the morning. But men need to start coming together. And uh, we would love for you to come and become a member of the man cave. And you can only do that by going to deepadventure.com. We will be right back with more of the Bear Wastick Adventure. Aloha, and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My co-adventure guide today is TJ Burden. Hey, TJ, aloha. Aloha. Thanks for having me. Happy the producer the producer of uh, Paul, the Apostle of Christ. Hey, uh, when you were out in Cali, did you ever start? Did you ever go surfing, or do you snowboard, or what do you do out there? You know, I'm, I'm from Michigan, so I, I'm used to a, a lake. So the ocean was a bit scary when I first, first jumped on a board. I about killed myself when that blade came batting yeah. on my head. So I... I I tread lightly on on, on on those big waves. I need somebody to, to teach me. Maybe Dude, if you can handle the freeways in L.A., you can handle anything. <laughs> well, I don't even know if I can do that, but we're getting yeah. through. Where where do you live now? Are you, You're still out? Are you so, so, Southern California yeah. still? Southern California, Culver City. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's it. You're right in the heart of it, right in the heart of oh, yeah, where it all happens. Right next to Sony Studios who, who uh, and Firm Films, who are the, our distributor and our, um, our, our partner on, on the Paul Apostle of Christ. Isn't it amazing when you when you abandon yourself to God's will, what happens? Mm. It's an, like you say, it's an adventure, um, and to not know exactly where you're going, I think I think is a tough tough thing for us, especially men that we want to control everything. I at least I do. I want to know what the next path is, what the next step is, and instead it's like just trust me with the next foot in front of the other. Um, and to have people, I think, I love what you're saying about your, 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 your man cave. I, I just think we live in such a highly individualistic age. It seems to only be getting worse. So I'm just lucky in, uh, to have some of these, uh, you know, Eric and Andrew around me and people who, who, who are journeying because we can't do it alone. You know, and, and uh, every, every film project is a, is an adventure in faith, isn't it? Oh yeah. It's, uh, when did, when did you get the glint in the eye? When did it, when did it begin? The idea. Who had it first, and how did that? 
I think Andrew brought it to us. We had developed, and we're still trying to make another another project, which is an alternative look at the biblical era, um, the backstory of the Canaanite woman called the Nazarene, which is a, a tremendous. It's a thriller. It's a biblical thriller. Um, so that one we hope to, we hope one day to make. But we decided after Paul, after excuse me, Full of Grace, our movie about Mary. Let's just maybe we just felt called to the next guy, you know. And yeah. it's been like that. We've been kind of introduced to the next person. Who's next? Who, who are we talking to? And so I think Andrew was like, we got to do this. And he did all the research and really brought this roadmap to us. And then we spent a couple of years uh, developing that, that, that how, script. And, how in the world did you, uh, it's like this old spaghetti Westerns. And they're like, where did they film this? This isn't, where did they film this show? I can't, could never figure it out. Or the old, the old uh, Bruce Lee movies. Where did they make this thing? Exactly. Uh, well, where, think, where did you guys film? Where was the set? Where did you guys film this? We were able to shoot in Malta, which oh, I don't I want to, I want to move there. I think you dig it. It's interesting. It has its, uh, it has its, it's, it's the most unique place. It's a little island south of Sicily, if your audience knows what it is. It's kind, and of, it's, kind of, kind of dear to Paul, right? Very dear to Paul. He <laughs> did ship, he shipwrecked there. Um, so he, Paul is very important to the island. So that was really special to be able to be there with the people. Um, oh. And it's an incredible, it has an incredible history. It has everything from Romans to Turks to, I mean, all of history has. Everybody's passed, passed through, right? Oh, yeah. And wow. uh, a tremendous Catholic presence. Really cool thing uh, at the co-cathedral of St. John, the main cathedral in, 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 in Valletta, um, the capital city, there is uh, Caravaggio. Um, Caravaggio lived there. Um, he escaped after he murdered someone in Italy to go to uh, – he's an interesting character too. But there's the largest Caravaggio in the world. It, it's an original work. It's the beheading of St. John the Baptist. And it is a power. I encourage you to Google it and, and look it up. It is. I'm going to go there. I want to go. Oh yeah, it's it's powerful. And it, I, I took our whole crew there one day to see that image because it's a. It kind of set uh, set a tone for the kind of because Paul's life was violent. Yeah. How do you tell a PG-13 version of the story so you don't alienate your audience? How do you keep it keep it safe but beautiful? And this this beheading of Saint John the Baptist. It was striking because there were little kids and moms. While looking at it, yeah. So it it was gruesome, but it, but beautiful, if that makes sense. Because yeah. I think that's probably the paradox of Christianity is that there's that even in the darkness, there's a certain beauty. Um, and even, so, yeah, without that, there it's like it, that's that's the the birth pangs, you know, of the beauty. That's but, right. You know, Malta. I mean, here's Paul. They said he walked bow legged because he'd been whipped so hard in the back that his spine mm. issues. You know, he 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 felt the pain of those stripes the rest of his life. Oh yeah, this gritty man is on, the, and you go to Malta. That was like almost like ground zero. You know, he's on his way to Rome for the yeah. first uh, for the first trial. And yeah, and we were lucky enough to have this this actor James Faulkner, who it was a late in the game addition to play Paul. Um, and but again, God knows exactly what he's doing and who he wants involved, and you kind of have to just to bend a knee to it. And uh, we had another idea, but reality sometimes takes you into other directions. So this guy came in late in the day and it, it was, he was absolutely the person to play this. He's this British actor, been working for 40 years. This is one of his first big, big roles. And he brought that sort of, when you say bow leggedness and that physicality of yeah. Paul, he, he, even though you don't see much of him, he's in a prison cell. He, um, he really transformed and, and the role transformed him. I mean, I was going to ask you, there. tell me about that. He, I mean, he, he's a guy and he said, he said all this publicly. So I don't think I'm, I don't feel like I'm betraying any confidence here, but he, he, he was a, someone who was born and raised in, in the church in the Anglican, right? Um, he, he himself was, um, never baptized, um, but brought his children up in, in, in a good moral way and, and, and in a way conducive of, you know, a, a man of natural morality, if you will, you know, um, and I think through the process, he, he really got to thinking more about like because of because of immersing himself into Paul's world, why baptism would be interesting or why it would be helpful, but not taking it like not an emotional reaction, not a intellectual curiosity, but more that you were talking about that earlier, that visceral. Well, I want to uh, ask you. Go ahead. Tell. Yeah, no, and and I think acting is that special gift because if you can walk your if you can walk a couple miles in someone else's shoes, watch out. Yeah. You, could, you could change you could change your opinion because yeah. you know. You know, it's Lectio Divina, right? In a, in a more mm -hmm. way, but you're living, living in the, but now I, I want to bring it back to you though. You personally, 
what was the visceral or spirit? What what happened in you? Uh, was there a moment, or what? Or what what uh, what did you come to grips with in that process? Sure, making Paul the apostle of Christ. Yeah, I think for for me the this sort of haunted uh, this 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 fact that you have a person who wasn't perfect. Paul wasn't perfect. In fact, he murdered in the name of God, but God that redeems everything. Um, and he doesn't make you forget everything. He doesn't make your life perfect. Um, so that you, but, but through that heals you through your woundedness. So that the end of the movie we were talking about earlier, that, that, that feeling that, um, that experience of, and I've had it in my life that the, the thing, your sinfulness in, in some way is what will, could bring you deeper into a relationship with Christ, not to exalt the sinfulness, but because we're broken people and that happens, um, but God, but through that, he draws us closer to him. And that was for me, uh, um, always is a, um, it's through the wound, it. it's through the wound, you know, um, you know, no one gets to go to heaven unless they're pierced, mm. you know, um, uh, Christ's side was pierced, mm. uh, Mary, uh, it said your heart will be pierced, you know, the saints whose heart, heart were pierced, um, there's a circumcision of the heart and it's at that point of, of, of our vulnerability where we, where we feel like we've kind of come to an end of ourselves, uh, that we can kind of find ourselves. It's at that point when we're most vulnerable and, 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 and seem empty and lost that we can, like the inner, the inner, inner cell that Paul was in, that you can hear Jesus knocking on the door Absolutely. and saying, let me in. And uh, so that woundedness is so important because that's what, that's, that's the point where we're joined with Jesus is that is the point of his wounds. And that's where his glory can stream in and where his life can stream in and where his love can flow out from us. Uh, you got about a couple minutes. Can you tell us, uh, where can people, uh, I, I think, are you still, sh uh, can people still be involved in showing this in their churches? And yes, tell us that kind of stuff because you got about a minute sure. and a half. Great. No, our, our ministry, ODB Films, uh, we have a whole ministry team that takes this film around the country. We, you can be, we take it to parishes so you can find out more on our website about, about those events. They're powerful, prayerful evenings of renewal and reflection, prayer, watching the film, praying through it. You say, let the Odavina. Um, our, one of our teammates, uh, Doug Took and our ministry site calls it Visio Divina. Amen. Um, it's, yeah. it's visual prayer so that, that these films can be used for a greater purpose, um, and to evangelize our own church. Um, this is an opportunity to invite in people who maybe, maybe wouldn't come to church on a Sunday, but I uh, invite me for, you know, a cocktail and a, and a movie. That's I'm, it. That's it. Why not? Just come That's and right hang. on. Come chill. That's and, it. And we're not going to bang this over the head. So those, those events are very powerful. And we've been this Lent, we're doing a ton of them. We do them both with Full of Grace and with, um, and with Paul. Well, we want to see, we want to see, from people listening to the show, we want to see dozens of parishes show this, uh, ci this cinema. Uh, Paul, the Apostle of Christ. T.J. Burton, what's the website where they can find you? odbfilms.com. odbfilms.com. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite you to go to our website. You can subscribe to our newsletter because uh, if you do, we were, we're going to send you a YouTube version of this radio show before it even airs. And you can also go to Bear Wozniak on YouTube and subscribe. And then you can see what TJ looks like. Uh, you can listen, of course, over EW10 and all of our podcasts in every place else. But it's really cool to get to meet the people we're talking to by watching it on YouTube. So please go there and subscribe because when we get more subscribers, YouTube uh, helps us evangelize more. TJ, thanks for being with us. You know what we say here at the end of the show? Viva Cristo Rey. Can you say that for us? Viva Cristo Rey. Viva Cristo Rey and aloha. Okay, brother. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10 episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group. All at bearwasnick.com.